Hello again everyone and welcome to this lesson for Break Stuff by Limp Bizkit. Song starts out with just a guitar riff and then the drums pick up on beat 4 and we play through a beat that goes like this. Two, three. Two, three. Carrying on through that verse, the beat stays pretty much the same, but in the fourth bar there's a nice little syncopated sizzle on the hi-hats. And then to round out that verse, we keep playing the beat until the stop on beat one. I'll go over that whole verse section one time. Two, three. A quick heads up, that stop at the end definitely has a little drag at the front. It's just two ghosted notes. If you can get them with your fingers, fantastic. Otherwise, you can just push the stick into the snare drum and that's going to give you a little bit of a buzz. Anyway, moving on. We're now into the chorus and this is pretty straightforward. Once you get the crashes and everything coordinated, we're just going to repeat the same pattern over and over. So two things in there, in the second bar there's one little ghost note on the snare drum and it looks quite complicated in the music when it's written down but if you just use your ears I think you might be able to just feel it and get that one going without too much effort. The other thing is the fourth bar where the beat kind of changes and we don't have that same backbeat right the way through. So let me just play the fourth bar for you one more time. From there we just keep playing that same beat until we hit the end of the chorus. So let me go back and put a whole chorus section together for you now. If you've made it this far, you'll be glad to know that the next verse is exactly the same as the first verse and the second chorus is almost exactly the same as the first chorus but instead of stopping in that eighth bar, we just play through the same way we did in the fourth bar. So that is going to bring us up to the bridge. And this is where things get a little bit tricky if this is the kind of stuff that you haven't done before. We're going to keep like a repetitive pattern happening on the hands and hit some accents after some snare drum accents on the kick drums. Sounds really complicated when I say it like that. Let me just play it slowly and I'll see if I can explain it better that way. If we just take a look at what the hands are doing for a minute, there's a pattern going on there that's six, six and four. The first note of each of those numbers is going to be an accent on the snare drum, like this. And then in terms of the kick drum, that's coming in after that accented snare drum every single time on the very next 16th note. 
It might be a little bit confusing because it's going to line up with a left hand, which can be a bit of a coordination challenge sometimes. You could leave the left hand out if you find that a little bit easier, but all up, you're going to end up with a pattern that sounds like this. You'll notice at the end of the pattern every time, I've started adding a little drag on the very last note. As this pattern progresses, we get more and more drags. And all it is, is just getting a little buzz or a little drag on the left hand right before that accented note. And then in the next cycle of two bars, I think I can hear even more drags. Once you get the feel for adding those drags on the left hand, it should be pretty easy to keep adding more and more and more as the song progresses. Eventually we hit a point where there's lots of drags, and then in the next time around, we start playing open hi-hats instead. Now this is a tricky pattern because I think the best way to get it done is to play with the left hand over on the hi-hats, but then swap the hands back over to the pattern that they were already doing. Let me play it slowly, hopefully it makes sense. So the sticking hasn't changed at all. I'm just playing right, left, right, left, right, left still, but it feels like the hands are going in a circle, which can be a little bit confusing. The left hand comes up onto the hi-hats, then the right hand moves to the hi-hats, left hand to the snare drum, and then they swap over again. So you're always kind of moving around like that. Don't be discouraged if it doesn't come to you straight away. It might take a little bit of practice, but it's definitely worth practicing because it sounds really cool when you play along to the song. Moving on, we're almost at the end of this bridge. We just need one more stop, and then we're gonna hit the next heavy section. All right, that brings us to the next part of the bridge with a super heavy guitar riff. The kick drums are gonna lock in as tight as possible with that guitar riff, and we're gonna play crashes over the top as well. Here's what it sounds like slow. play that exact same pattern for another four bars, and then we're gonna lose the crash cymbal accents and just play the same beat underneath with the crash cymbal riding over the top. We're nearly at the end of the song. All we have to do is get through one more chorus and this is how it goes. That brings us to the end of Break Stuff by Limp Bizkit. It's a great one to play along to, and there's a couple of nice little challenges in there, like that bridge section. If you haven't done that sort of pattern before, it might take a little bit of practice, but hey, that's how we get better on the drums. So have fun practicing that one, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.